in the press the and how the Washington the Post run. is pushing back against that. Alex Stay Jones and the GCN Radio Network. From the water table to our soils to the atmosphere itself, our world is becoming more and more toxic each and every day. But it's not just the air outside that's toxic. Indoor air has been shown to have two to five times higher concentrations of pollutants than even outdoor air. And most Americans spend 90% of their time inside using toxic chemicals within their homes. There are more than 42 million smokers in the United States. Well over a thousand types of mold and mildew linked to numerous conditions. And don't forget the fact that six million Americans live with pets they're allergic to as well. When I began to research these statistics, it was clear to me it was time to start cleansing my lungs in order to combat the toxic environment that we cannot escape but that we can fight back against. Made with organic and wild cultivated herbs and manufactured in the USA, the new InfoWars Life Lung Cleanse is here in a convenient spray bottle that can be brought with you throughout any toxic environment. Now available exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. Aging starts at the cellular level. When cells become toxic, they die early and aging sets in. In the past decade, we have witnessed unparalleled scientific discoveries. During that period, key patented compounds have focused on mitochondrial growth, nerve growth, and rejuvenation. But no one has put together a formula that focuses directly on brain health, nerve growth factors, and optimizing your cellular energy at the same time. We now have the synergistic solution. DNA Force, just one of the key compounds. BioPQQ is backed by major clinical studies and over 175 PubMed listed published studies. You want the best that's out there at the lowest price anywhere? The ultimate value, cutting edge, trailblazing game changer that also supports the info war. Secure your DNA Force today at InfoWarsLife.com or call toll free 888-253-3139. DNA Force from InfoWars Life. After consulting top doctors, nutritionists, pharmacists, and others, we have developed what I believe is the ultimate non-GMO organic super male vitality formula. Super male vitality by InfoWars Life is so powerful that I only take half the recommended dose. I jump out of bed ready to fight these criminals every day. I look forward to waking up and taking my super male vitality. Visit InfoWarsLife.com today to secure your super male vitality and other powerful products from InfoWars Life. The government's Department of Homeland Security is buying up loads of ammo. At the same time, they're restricting civilians' rights to own and purchase firearms. Can you put two and two together? Infidel Body Armor can stop every round, including hollow points and 308 sniper rounds. Is reasonably priced and fully legal. But for how long? Go to InfidelBodyArmor.com, spelled I-N-F-I-D-E-L BodyArmor.com. Infidel Body Armor just won't quit. We are on the march. The Empire is on the run. Alex Jones and the GCN Radio Network. I'm waiting in my cold cell when the bell begins to chime. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight. Now we have some major changes in the way the CDC is telling people to care for Ebola patients this week. We got new rules on Monday. Now listen to some of the new rules. In the new rules, they're told to wear double gloves. They're told to wear waterproof boot covers that go to at least mid-calf. Single-use waterproof or water-resistant gowns that extend to mid-calf. Single-use face shields that are disposable. Surgical hoods to ensure complete coverage of the head and neck and so on and so on. These are things they did not tell us that we needed before. Listen to this one. Use of a respirator at all times. At all times. This is the CDC saying this. Either an N95 respirator or a powered air purifying respirator. Are they admitting that it can be transferred airborne? with aerosol particles? Is that what they're now saying? Clearly, we see that something needs to be changed. We saw that the first patient that was brought in the United States, one patient gave the disease to two people. That's the same rate of transfer that we've seen within Africa. 
Now, of course, that didn't happen when they brought in the other patients to the secure facilities at uh, Emory University. The other nurse is being treated, interestingly enough. One is being treated uh, in Emory as the uh, doctors who were brought in previously were taken to uh, uh, Emory. And I believe the other one was in Nebraska. Um, I'm not sure about that, guys. But anyway, the other uh, nurse that has it is at the NIH facility in Maryland. They're not leaving them in the regular hospital in Dallas to be treated because we've seen that there were a lot of problems with that treatment there. But a lot of the problems were what they were told and not told by the CDC. How many times, though, can we do that? They've sent our soldiers into the heart of the Ebola outbreak now, into Liberia, not giving them any hazmat equipment, simply giving them gloves, single gloves, and a face mask, and then saying, well, you know, we're just trusting that they won't come into contact with anybody. Yet they're going to send now, first it was 3,000, then 4,000, now 5,000 soldiers into that area. I think we're going to see it come back, if that's their attitude that they're going to take. And of course, even though they stockpiled 160,000 hazmat suits, according to one supplier back in September, they're not going to be giving those to the soldiers who are going over there. We're going to be talking to Dr. Francis Boyle in the third hour. Uh, he's someone who knows a great deal about bioweapons research, having written a couple of treaties about the subject, also a book about the subject. We're going to ask him why there is so much research going on in those, these very countries where we see this outbreak. But, you know, whenever we question the things that the CDC is doing, the reckless behavior that they're modeling, uh, the lack of adequate protocols, how they're standing down from their own protocols, as we question that, we're called, of course, conspiracy theorists. And uh, the Washington Post is using what I think is a straw man to attack anyone who questions the government narrative on this. This is an article that came out on the 17th. So I think it was, uh, it was last, the end of last week. A major Liberian newspaper, they say, is churning out Ebola conspiracy after conspiracy. That's, that's the magic word. You say conspiracy and it shuts down all investigation all questioning of what the government is doing. And they use this particular paper, this article, to, it's kind of a straw man to push back on U.S. bioweapons research. Anybody that has questions about that? They push back on open borders. They push back on vaccines. Listen to what they say. They say the observer in Monrovia was saying that someone was going around dressed as nurses, giving people Ebola vaccines, and they were immediately getting, getting sick and dropping into a coma. And they say recent articles published by the paper have speculated that the U.S. Defense Department manufactured the Ebola outbreak. And they've alleged that the U.N. has deliberately introduced the Ebola virus and they fretted over the impending influx of foreigners. So there you go. They, if you question U.S. bio research, you're just as crazy as this conspiracy theory in this paper. Uh, if you question open borders, then you're xenophobic like uh, this, this newspaper there. Or if you say that you have concerns about what's in vaccines, of course, then, then you're uh, just a conspiracy theorist. Well, you know, there really is a reason to question this article. They don't give the guy's name that they say was going around dumping formaldehyde in wells. They say someone was dumping formaldehyde in specific locations. When they caught him, he said, we are many, we're doing this in several cities. But no other outlet reported that. They didn't have the guy's name. There was no arrest information record. And yet they used this to push back not only on conspiracy theories, but kind of equivocate on the Liberian government wanting to censor the press, censor reports about what's going on in their country. But I want to point out something pretty obvious to the Washington Post, to our listeners, and that is people really are dumping formaldehyde in our vaccines. Yes, this dangerous thing is being put into our vaccines. They do a lot of that with things that are supposed to agitate your immune system. That's the theory. It's going to agitate your immune system more so that you'll make even more antibodies. So they put things like formaldehyde into the vaccines. It's not that they're dumping it in the water. They actually are dumping stuff in our water as well. They're dumping fluoride, a class four toxin. You've seen the video that we've had here at InfoWars where we had uh, clandestine footage. We took the tour of the water facility here in Austin, took pictures of the, from, of the uh, not the formaldehyde, but the fluoride container that was being dumped into the water. 
a toxic class four uh, designation on the container as well as the corrosive pipes. They're dumping that in the water if you think that fluoride is healthy for you. And of course, this is a different form of fluoride. But if you think that you need fluoride, then take it as a medicine. Why would you mass medicate the water supply with anything? You can't control the dosage. Some people are going to get too much. Some people are going to get too little. You should never dose medication through a water supply. But, of course, that's what we see happening all the time. But let's get back to the press aspect of this. Of course, as I said, the Washington Post basically gives us a template, a straw man, to push back against anybody who questions our bioweapons research, our open borders, or vaccines. But then they go on and they talk about how the librarian president asked for broader powers to control false media reports. They said, she said, because falsehood and negative reporting on the state of the affairs is likely to defeat the national effort and the fight of the Ebola virus, it's important that it be discouraged and prevented. Well, they don't criticize that. Actually, they say, well, there could be a case for doing that because look at how crazy this particular newspaper is. It was voted down by the Congress that they, they did not enact that. But what they wanted to do was to censor anybody from the press reporting on Ebola in the country or what was happening there. They had their own numbers that they were putting out, and the WHO, the World Health Organization, said we have no confidence at all in their numbers. But they were going to actually penalize any healthcare workers or government officials who talked to the press. That's how stringent it was. Does the Washington Post have a problem with that? No, they say uh, there's... Uh, it's not really a, a zero-sum game, they said. There, there's actually a precedent for the librarian press acting irresponsibly. So they kind of say, well, you know, we really ought to kind of take a look at this because they're irresponsible. Let's remember when the Washington Post starts giving a pass, equivocating censorship, massive censorship in Liberia with inaccurate reporting. Let's remember that it was the Washington Post itself in 1980 that had a Janet Cook story that won a Pulitzer Prize. They had to take that, they had to give it back because it was found out that it was pure fiction. Now, it resonated with people because it was about the war on drugs. And there was a lot of elements to that, that people could believe that it was a true story, but it was a total piece of fiction. And they didn't vet it any more than this Liberian paper vetted it. But that's no reason to allow the government to essentially shut down and control the press. And we see them moving in that direction over and over again. We have yet another indicator of that, again, from a Republican on the FCC, on the Federal Communications Commission. Remember, he was the guy who blew the whistle on the survey that the FCC wanted to do. They, were, they announced that they were going to do a content survey on different media outlets, including online media outlets, which there's no reason for them to get involved, including print media, newspaper they were going to do surveys on that. How do you form your opinions? How are you putting this stuff together? They're still interested in that. They're still, the government is still funding now through the National Science Foundation, a million dollar grant. They're funding a study called the Truthy Study. And uh, as Ajit Pai points out, the member of the Federal Communications Commission that blew the whistle on this content survey. And why is that a problem? Obviously, the FCC is not there to judge the content of what media companies put out. They're there to allocate frequency spectrum. That's why they shouldn't even be involved in the internet, certainly not in print newspapers. But he asked this question, he says, if you take to Twitter to express your views on a hot button issue, does the government have an interest in deciding whether you're spreading misinformation? If you tweet your support for a candidate in the elections, should taxpayer money be used to monitor your speech and evaluate your partisanship? Okay, so they named this the Truthy Project after uh, Stephen Colbert's uh, uh, program where he, where he talks about that. But they're saying that they want to look at social pollution. They want to study what they call social epidemics. In other words, how are memes created? How do they spread through the pop culture? How do they propagate? They're not just interested in the propagation of information and how that moves. They want to scientifically study this so that they can control you. That's what this is all about. That's why this is so scary. There's an amazing article, great piece of work here from uh, Glenn Greenwald on The Intercept, 
another Snowden document that's come out. This one is a presentation that was put out by GCHQ. That's Britain's NSA, essentially. Uh, as he points out, it's a previously secret unit within that organization. And we're going to take a look at some of the slides here. But basically, this was something that was given to NASA, uh, not NASA, to the NSA, sorry, and to the English-speaking Five Eyes Alliance. Now, that's the uh, New Zealand, Australia, the UK.